Hey there, historians! In your lesson preview, you were asked to draw, paint, or take a picture of something that represented or symbolized an important moment from your life. How did it feel? Trying to visually represent a thought, feeling, or experience isn't always the easiest thing to do, for some of us at least. <laughs> Yet over the course of American history, there have been many talented artists who have managed to do just that. And these artists have emerged from a diverse range of places and contexts, different neighborhoods, different cultures, different ways of seeing and experiencing the world. These differences reflect the diversity within what we call American art. Today, we'll learn about some of the artists who fall within the umbrella of American art, as well as explore how their particular upbringing and life experiences in the United States influence their work. Instead of our usual guiding questions, we'll have some questions that are unique to each artist and movement we discuss today. But before we get started, let's see our lesson essential question. How does art reflect the diverse experiences and perspectives of Americans? All right, let's dive in. We can't begin any conversation about the history of art in the United States without acknowledging that Native American artists were creating art long before colonization and are still producing great works of art today. Native artists have expressed themselves through a wide range of art forms. Many of their creations were not just designed to be useful, everyday objects, but also to tell stories and pass down important cultural beliefs from generation to generation like the Katsina dolls you see here, which the Hopi and Pueblo people craft to teach young children about the various Katsinas, or spirits, and their significance to the tribe's ceremonies. Many communities like the Pueblo, Hopi, and Zuni use clay and plant materials from their local environments to create pottery and weave baskets. In addition to their practical uses, these ceramics and baskets often feature different geometric designs depictions of animals or people, and symbols that represent spiritual beliefs of that particular community. Navajo and Pueblo tribes are also well known for their woven textiles. These textiles often feature complex geometric designs, which may vary between tribes and even between different clans or families within a tribe. These designs can have symbolic meanings representing spiritual beliefs, historical events, or elements of the natural world. The Navajo, Hopi, and Zuni are also well known for their silver work and turquoise jewelry. The use of silver in jewelry making was introduced after the arrival of the Spanish and turquoise has been used since ancient times. The native peoples of the Southwest also create petroglyphs or rock carvings and pictographs or rock paintings that depicted animals, human figures, and abstract designs. One amazing collection of petroglyphs can be found on the Newspaper Rock State Historic Monument in Utah. How do you think the Newspaper Rock got its name? Well, in Navajo, it's called Tse Hanne, which roughly translates to rock that tells a story. You see, native artists have utilized petroglyphs, petrographs, and many of the other art forms we've discussed to record and pass down the histories and cultural values of their respective tribes from generation to generation. Many native artisans are still creating breathtaking works of art today to financially support their communities and keep their cultural traditions alive. Let's stop and complete our graphic organizer for this section. Next, we're going to focus on an American artist who belonged to a movement known as the Hudson River School. 
The Hudson River School was an art movement in the mid-19th century that was characterized by meticulous, romantic portrayals of American landscapes, particularly of the Hudson River Valley and surrounding areas. The artist was Robert S. Duncanson, who was born in 1821 to a family of free black Americans in New York. Duncanson initially began as a house painter, but eventually taught himself more advanced techniques. Despite the challenges of being a black artist in a predominantly white society, Duncanson rose to prominence by the 1840s and 50s by painting landscapes that conveyed themes of tranquility and freedom, which were in contrast to the political turmoil and conflict of the time. Pause and reflect on what you remember was happening in the United States during the 1840s and 50s. You might remember that at this point, the U.S. was slowly building up to the Civil War, with fierce debates taking place about the institution of slavery and what place it did or didn't have in a growing nation. These fiery national debates couldn't be found in paintings like Blue Hole, Floodwaters, Miami River, or Landscape with Rainbow. These showcased peaceful and harmonious depictions of America's natural landscapes. Although Duncanson didn't address his own racial identity or the political discourse around slavery at the time in his work, some historians argue that this art with its themes of freedom, peace, and appreciation for nature, was a form of resistance and optimism during turbulent times. Let's stop and complete your graphic organizer for Robert S. Duncanson before we move on. Our next American artist embody the tenets of a movement known as American Realism. American Realism was an art style that was prominent at the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th centuries that strived to capture the everyday lives, experiences, and environments of working class and middle class Americans with a high degree of detail and accuracy. As industrialism transformed the American landscape and more people migrated to urban cities for work, Many artists felt less inclined to paint romantic landscapes and instead capture the realities of everyday life for many Americans. One of these artists was Edward Hopper. Born into a middle-class family in 1882 in Nyack, New York, Edward Hopper trained as an illustrator before moving to New York City to study art. The bustling metropolis significantly contrasted with his quiet hometown, and this dichotomy, or contrast, between urban life and the solitude of small-town existence heavily influenced his work. Characterized by dramatic contrasts of light and shadow, stark angles, and an almost cinematic framing, paintings such as Nighthawks and Automat portrayed isolated individuals within city settings. Hopper's depictions of loneliness and alienation in modern cityscapes captured the experience of many Americans who were struggling to find success in a world that was rapidly changing around them and may have reflected his own feelings of displacement and yearning for the simpler, small-town life of his youth. Let's stop and complete the graphic organizer for Edward Hopper in your PDF. Our last American artist is associated with a movement known as American Modernism, which was prevalent throughout most of the first half of the 20th century, but particularly prominent between World War I and World War II. Influenced by technological innovations, political upheavals, and the invention of new mediums like photography and film, American Modernists sought to capture the complexities and uncertainties of a changing world. They did so by diverging from traditional painting techniques, opting instead to experiment with new abstract ways of representing human emotions and thoughts. One artist who did just that was Georgia O'Keeffe. O'Keeffe was born on a Wisconsin farm in 1887. She studied first at the Art Institute of Chicago and later at the Art Students League in New York, 
both of which initially trained her in traditional painting techniques. However, she eventually grew dissatisfied with this education and sought to develop her own personal style. She began creating radical abstract works that explored the emotional and visual boundaries of her subjects, breaking away from the societal expectations of women artists being required to conform to the established styles of the time. We see her approach on full display in paintings like this one, which was part of her Red Canna series. You can see how she doesn't try to paint a canna flower exactly how it may look in real life. Instead of the hard, darker hues like we saw in Duncanson's landscape paintings, we see the flowers and background represented in soft, bright colors. Instead of the straight, clean lines in Hopper's paintings, we see how the different hues almost melt into one another. Her innovative compositions, bold use of color, and dramatic scale were distinct features of her style. Later in her life, she would move to New Mexico, and with change in surroundings came more shifts in her art style. Her paintings of the New Mexican landscape, animal skulls, and large flowers, and her other abstract representations of American life have become iconic images in the world of American modernism. Before we wrap up, let's stop and complete the graphic organizer for Georgia O'Keeffe in your PDF. To sum it all up, the historical context, environment, and life experiences of each artist influenced the way they saw the United States and how they portrayed it in their art. In your PDF, you'll have the opportunity to create some of your own artwork that represents your perspective and feelings toward a place or experience that's been important to you. Until then, keep making history. Hey.